to share with you my views on the great significance of the once in the five years grand political assembly, the 19th National Congress of the CPC convened in Beijing last month. I noticed there are some also friends from China and a lot of friends actually have been visiting China back and forth. And you may be better informed even than me. Uh, so here I give my, my personal view and for you to, uh, for you to comment <coughs> or to give your uh, opinion. The Congress uh, for me actually uh, has provided a unique opportunity to learn and understand China's major policy trends, reform and the development blueprint and strategies in the following five, 10, 15, and even more years to come. The Congress lasted about a week and produced successfully new leadership of the party and quite a few important documents and reports. Here, you maybe know that uh, our General Secretary uh, gave his, delivered his report for more than three hours. So it's a very uh, comprehensive, significant report. Now here, maybe I have uh, 40 minutes. <laughs> so I will try to concentrate. Oh, there are some other documents during the conference. Uh, we have uh, revised the constitution, constitution of the CPC, the Chinese Communist Party. We have also a special report for China's, uh, in, should be, should we say, should, 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 for China's chief whips uh, disciplinary report to report to the Congress that how they have the measures and actions to have a party really answer and care for the people. <clears throat> now here, I want to concentrate on the report made by the General Secretary Xi Jinping, especially emphasize the major achievements we believe we have and the policy areas. Then I will deal with the foreign policy and the Sino-Irish relations very briefly. First, the achievements over the past five years. Since the year of 2012, when Xi Jinping became the general secretary, achievements obtained are tremendous. China has, in fact, used the words in the report to the fact that China has, in fact, surmounted many tough hurdles that were long remaining on our development track and accomplished many tough tasks that were left on the reform agenda for quite a while. I think the meaning of this is we started our reform and opened up since 1978. It became, it started earnest, in earnest in 1980s. And in the beginning, it is a uh, large-scale reforms for the easy part. Now we look back. For example, in the rural areas, we just simply dismantled the, what they called people's communal system. That system was modeled, so part of it, on Soviet Union to have total public ownership of the land and put all the farmers and peasants as, farm, uh, as the workers, like in the Soviet Union. We didn't do that. We didn't go that far. We keep our Chinese com People's Commun Union, we keep the land still the state. But we gave the land to the, what we call production teams and the villages to let them perform and manage in a collective way. That is what we call in the China system in the, in the rural areas, in the agriculture, agriculture, rural areas, 
we call it collective system. So now we still have that the land in China is still state owned, but now we dismantled the whole people's union, people's commune system. And we, have, we gave the land to the farmers to let them, pretty much like here, the farmers, each farm have their own land. They can choose as they will, do it collectively, they can do it in the farmer, in the household way. So this one policy, one measure is covers the whole country. So just half a year and the, the one year, the, 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 the harvest uh, of the whole China's agriculture is doubled. Another example is, in the beginning of China's reform, we just dismantle and reorganize China's central government's uh, ministries. Some ministries just simply disappear because some of, the, some of the ministries also modeled on the early Soviet government. They get every sector, almost every sector of the industry, one government industry. So you have, you have first ministry of light industry, second ministry of light industry, a lot of ministries. We also, from the beginning, we didn't do exactly Soviet way. We keep it more comprehensive. But still, we feel some of the uh, ministries are redundant. So in the beginning, in 19, late 1970s and early 1980s, we make them just disappear, like Ministry of Textile, Ministry of Light Industry, Ministry of Commerce, it disappear. That will, in a matter of 24 hours, affect the whole country because people feel they can do themselves. Like in the Ministry of Commerce, Shang Wu Bu, Bu, Ministry of, we call it Ministry of Commerce. Now the Ministry of Commerce is for the trade. So a lot of industries is completely privatized in consumers, in textiles, in light industries. But gradually, our reform goes to some more specific and higher level. That's what we, we have all that reforms. Of course, there are some other reforms like what we call price reform. So we go, we, we go it, we, we begin to let market decide the price of many or more merchants and products. And now China, uh, there is no more uh, what we call the management of the price as we did 10, 20, or 30 years ago. But now when our General Secretary uh, Xi Jinping uh, entered office 2012, we have already experienced 35 years, more than about 35 years of reform. So now, you know, a lot of fields, we feel we are pretty much like a country of middle level developed country or the higher level of the development country that some of the measures and the policies, we need to do it in a more fine and a nuanced way. And even if you take one measure, it only benefit maybe 10 million people. Another measure only benefit another sector of people. So you, you get a lot of uh, coordination and uh, uh, work to do. And also, of course, we see the gap between the rich and the poor, coastal areas and hinterland, west and east, the difference, differentiation of the incomes and the wealth. So this all need the current leadership to handle. So now, you, if you look at China, you didn't see a measure like that scale because we are proud to say we have successfully accomplished all of them. So for this, for this leadership, now they have to do it one every time, one every some time. And after a lot of in China consultation, discussion, deliberation. 
as many as now we look back in these five years, as many as, as, many as 360 major national initiatives and more than 1,500 sectorial or local measures have been adopted or carried out. A great many new streamlining and simplifying of old institutions are put in place for a more open business environment. That's the purpose including greater dynamic foreign trade and investment, a bigger section of high-value added economy, a lot of eradication of unnecessary form 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 formalities and red tapes. And secondly, we have advanced conceptual, institutional, practical studies, engineering, and experiments to unleash fresh impetus for and encourage the purpose, quality and innovation-driven growth. So now even in Ireland, we have already failed the impact. Like some, I saw some of the professors here in the CIT, in the UC, UC, UCD, and they have a lot of professors and, and, and uh, universities uh, uh, presidents to come to visit here. What they do, they just study how you manage your universities and colleges. So be careful, give them your good experience, <laughs> not bad. So the, te the details Chinese teams, they like to learn, are very, very much micro. They like to even have a bunch of your uh, charters carried to home to study how and when they can apply or they can try at least in China's situation. The purpose is to try to transform China's economy and the environment in an upgraded way, more, as I said, quality and innovation driven. China has become a gigantic market now, where all elements of innovation are converging, leading to a growing part of the economy, from infrastructure to manufacturing, from business models, education models, to ways of consumption. So now you can see that we have, we, we have the better and the good gadgets now. We have some gadgets can go deeper into the sea, ocean, uh, we, we may have the uh, rocket to send uh, more uh, satellites, uh, dozens of them or 20 of them in one, in one shoot. We try to get our uh, production and uh, manufacturing and services better. Thirdly, a people first guideline. You can see a lot of translations. Anyway, the basis is the idea is the people to be people first has been firmly implemented for development to make sure that our growth is inclusive and fair. Pretty much, pretty much like the paper title here and somewhere, sometimes. Poverty elimination remains a firm commitment. Personal income has registered sustained price, a rise, outpacing GDP growth for years. Income gaps between urban and rural areas and between different regions have been narrowed. More than 13 million new urban jobs have been created every year for four consecutive years. When I was in Beijing, I work in the state council and we work on the government papers. I know that every year then, we need to produce or create at least uh, eight million jobs, new jobs. With a, with a growth rate of eight. Actually, we achieved almost nine to 12. Now, with six to seven growth rate, we managed to create 12 to 13 million new jobs every year. It's two island, more than two island. <laughs> Income per capita in poor rural areas has, has maintained double-digit growth. Significant advances have been made in pursuing green and ecologically sound economic expansion. 
Fourthly, relation between China and countries in the world has witnessed great progress. Our friends and partners are all over the world and growing. Uh, when we say partners, in, in the, it is in a much, much uh, bad, good. It's, it is all good uh, connotation. It is not the, in here, the business partners means we can cooperate in this area, maybe we can compete in the other areas. The partners in China's sense is, is very good. <clears throat> we have together with more than 60 countries across Asia, Africa, Pacific Ocean, and European, and Europe, jointly pursue the Belt and the Road Initiative. We initiated the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, AIIB, and Ireland is the member. Set up the Silk Road Fund. Uh, I think this fund is, is, is solely China created with 40 billion US dollars. The AIIB is China's initiative but it's jointly contributed by, by the international partners. Uh, maybe as a member, like here, I don't know, what, 0 0.3, or you, have your, you, can, you can make your contribution. And uh, I think 17 European countries also are the members. They hosted and hosted the first Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation this year. We in the Belt and Road in, in International Cooperation call and stand strongly for togetherness, sharing, and win-win approach. We advocate joint actions to enhance infrastructure construction, connectivity, policy coordination, humanity exchanges, partners, national goals, collaboration. That's my translation, and there are some other uh, translations of the approach we advocate for the Belt and the Road uh, initiative. And lastly, remarkable achievements have been made in ensuring full and strict governance over the CPC organization itself. I think you have the news now and then about this. And the firm action has been introduced to take out tigers, swap flies, and hunt down foxes abroad. So now even, I think, thanks for the support of all our uh, international partners, including Ireland, United States, uh, Australia, New Zealand, all English countries, I think, have more foxes uh, uh, than some other uh, language-speaking country, more convenient maybe to hide in the English language. And really, we enjoy this very good international cooperation to find the corrupted people, some of them in the company, some of them in government, and in the party organizations, and we bring them back for justice. The anti-corruption campaign has been built into a crushing tide and won wide support across China. Secondly, the future trends in China's policy. The 19th Congress has paved the way for a very dynamic and very bright and inspiring future of China. And I believe for our cooperation with the rest of the world. The Congress formulated a grand guideline for action and the development blueprint for China in the new era. Uh, there are a lot of uh, plans there. Now, even international community know that is for real. When we say it, we will achieve it. And as an experience, and we will look back, all those goals, we not only achieved it, we surpassed it. We surpass it every, almost every major goal so far in these 35 years, 38 years. By 2020, China will be built. Here, I'll only give you some abstract, some ideas. You can refer back to the report themselves. By 2020, China will be built into a higher level of prosperity for the whole society. 
By that, uh, I just guess. And China, when we say uh, how much is the level at what, we use, we, we, we use some modest terms. Uh, last year, our per capita, uh, when we just started our reform, our per capita uh, GDP for China per annum is about three to 500 US dollars, almost the lowest in the world, like African countries, poverty countries. And we have a corrigible plan. We have two corrigible plan uh, in 20 years. But now I think we have surpassed it. Now by the year of last, we have already about 8,000 per capita per annum GDP for Chinese people. Of course, the coast areas, the about two, one to 200 billion population of them already uh, reach uh, 10,000 and over US dollars per capita per annum. By the year of 2035, China will basically reach the target of what we call socialism modernization. Socialist modernization, socialist modernization. To, to see the countries, uh, the World Bank and the IMF have their own hallmark and uh, standard. They, they classify the country as developing poor country, developed world, and the medium developed world, developed countries, like Ireland is the most developed countries. We use that as a reference, and then we apply it in China's situation. So China, we have an our set of the jargons and the standard. So now is the time I think we got familiar with Chinese way of how we classify China's development. So sometimes you, since all these are, are English translation, and you refer to Chinese origin, original version, it is a very condensed expression, like a xiao kang shi hui, uh, moderately better. So in English, you, you cannot quite get some sense, but you got, oh, it's better. And then you get a moderniz modernization, uh, modernize the country, it may be higher. That is 2035. By the middle of this century, we are to attain another target of what is called greater modern socialist country. The guide indicators will be those of even more prosperous life strong economy, democratic system, a, a more democratic system, advanced culture, harmonious society, and a beautiful environment. You can get a sense, it's like in here you get a, you get a, a, a green and inclusive and all, all that jargons. Let me elaborate a little bit of, those, of all those goals and aims, especially what we are going to do to further deepen and quicken reforms. First, we'll continue to push forward the supply side restructuring. Focus will be laid on the real sectors of economy, quality of the supply system, advanced manufacturing, integration of the internet, big data, and artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence. All this, we put it here, means there will be, like here, you have European solution, you have national solution. In China, if, 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 if something put it in a central leadership report, it means there will be a China's national solution. There's a China's budget, the national central government budget will give them, give their input. So when you read China's report like that, watch that field and you will find opportunities. You will plan your own company's interaction with China. We also foster new elements of growth and adapt to medium and high end consumption areas. Got any sense? That means 
will have more investment in China on our health, education, science and technology, food, and the environment. That we will see here. You are good in health, food, dairy. You will see more teams and delegation coming to carry out that point. Infrastructure, infrastructure construction will be further strengthened across the board. There's China, we have already uh, have our, across the country, I think a pretty impressive modernization or upgrading of China's roads, ports, and airways. Now we feel we're still not sufficient. As you, you see, and we see too, that China is so vast. And even one province is like a country in Europe. And if you look, one example is now I went back to China. I see in China we have gigantic, gigantic city and province like Shanghai, Beijing, and Shenzhen with 20, 000, 20 million people. And some provinces have 100 million people. And then we have the second, the second layer is the, those <coughs> medium cities with with millions of people. And with, we have third layer of the cities and towns with hundreds of thousands or one million of population. Airport, for example, if we, if we build new airports, actually we need to build new airports for every, almost every, or most of the third layer cities with a population of, say, 1 million to 5 million. We have, hundred, we have several hundreds, or maybe thousands new airports built in China in the next 10 to five, not 10, people can't wait, maybe three, two to five years. Secondly, will make China a country of innovators and encourage entrepreneurship in a big and a comprehensive way. While national nations strengthened, local and private efforts will also be encouraged. Medium and small firms are going to receive greater support and assistance. Thirdly, market reform will be pressed on firmly and steadily. The key areas will be the property rights system, assets management, transactions and transactions, including in the rural areas, like farming. State-owned enterprises, development of mixed ownership business, financial sectors, capital market, financial regulatory systems, and risk management systems, and so on and so forth. So all this, you can see the measures are really very, very specific. Our negotiation with European Union and America and others about the bilateral investment agreement, about the new uh, cooperation in the governance of the economy, all come down to these very specific uh, measures and laws and the regulations in China and with our in China and in our relations with the rest of the world. Fourth, investment in education, employment assistance, social security system, healthcare, will all be increased. By the year 2020, all rural residents living below the current poverty line will be lifted out of poverty, 70 million of them. So this is a must for every county secretary. Every county, you see China's central government, the, the province, and the metropolitan cities, metropolitan cities, prefectures, and counties. We have five layers of government and townships. So every township secretary, maybe village secretaries and township secretaries and county secretaries uh, got very busy for this. In regard to our opening up drive then, China now opening up. So in China, we, 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 if we summarize China's policy, we always say with two, three parts. Reform concerning China's internal system, opening up our relation with the rest of the world, trade investment, now, opening up, China's door will be opened wider and bigger. On one hand, we'll further expand foreign trade. 
with more liberalization in the fields of business and investment, will put in place the systems such as the pre-establishment national treatment plus a negative list across the board. Very, very professional now. I think only the uh, Brussels experts, maybe here you understand it. This is considered the, the, the it's a very big uh, change in China's uh, economic system, especially our trade and investment. We'll, we'll grant more free hand goals to pilot free trade zones to conduct business and explore the opening of free trade ports. In China, the reason, one of the reasons why we have these free zones and the free ports and the free, free this, free that, some people say that is, uh, part of it is learning from this country, you have the Shandong free zones. Another is China is so vast. When we apply one policy to the country, we have to do a lot of pilot schemes to say which specific policy is applying and suitable for a given localities. So in China, if you go to China, it's really very diversified, and even ho both horizontally and vertically. And we have the highest, uh, like Himalaya Plateau and, uh, and Qinghai and, uh, and the Tibet Plateau. It is average 3,000 meters above sea level. And we have the middle, about 1,000 to, to 3,000, and we have, the, we have the land like Ireland, 10 meters above sea level, of one meters. And we have the, I think it's five, almost three big uh, weather zones. It is cold, continental cold and warm, and uh, all the way down to the tropical weather. Secondly, we'll continue to support multilateral trade regimes, the WTO, of course, it is stuck in the negotiation, and work for facilitate to facilitate the establishment of free trade areas and build an open world economy. The Belt and Road Initiative will, above all, remain a big priority, with greater attention to introducing more business into China and China business go global. A lot of, I, I just talked with the uh, delegation of the COC and others from China, they visited China just last, uh, several weeks ago. They have already very much aware of how to fit in their development and cooperation with China's initiative. I think this is a very good sign. And they would ask me whether their project thinking and planning can fit in to the One Belt, One Road initiative. And uh, also, I think some other, uh, discussions are, have already very deep into the system and the institution, like uh, the senior citizens care center, the emergency uh, response systems, and the health care, China's medication systems. So a lot of things we can, we can exchange. Now, thirdly, China's foreign policy. I'm not going to expound everything about foreign policy. I will leave it for the questions. What I want to emphasize here is uh, President Xi Jinping in his report has made it clear some jargon, what we call the major country diplomacy with China's characteristics, aims to foster a new type of international relations and build a community with a shared future for mankind. This, there are two, two jargons here. <clears throat> the essence of what that means I believe is simple and clear. China upholds in the international stage the principles, is based on the principle, principles, continue to be based on the principles of equality, mutual respect, and a mutual beneficial win-win. A community with a shared future for mankind means to build an open, Ex inclusive, clean, and a beautiful world of lasting peace, universal security, and the common prosperity to go with this globalization. With those principles and guidelines, the Chinese leadership advocate respecting the legitimate rights of all nations to choose their own development paths, upholding international fairness and justice by opposing unilateralism or power politics. 
Standing by the aims and principles of UN Charter, China will never pursue its own development at the expense of others' well-being. I think this point, as or in future, we can really spend more time to, to elaborate this. And uh, this is really, we feel, what China can contribute for the current and the future international community. Now, I want to say a few words about the Sino-Irish uh, Sino relations. I'm very happy to see that Ireland will continue to be our very valuable partner. Of course, there are some numbers, you know, it's very impressive, and uh, we keep the double-digit growth of trade, and also our investment to this country also dramatically increasing. Uh, what I, I want to take this opportunity also to say is, our opportunities with all that uh, grand gigantic plans and the initiative, our opportunities are abundant and our challenges ahead also striking. So far, we have, for example, for China, Ireland, I know many of you are pushing for the direct air service. So far, we have not realized it. And also, visa facilitation improved, but not yet to the level both our people's hope. Conceptionally and from real practice, more and more people spoken to us that they want our exchanges and cooperation greatly enhanced, but sometimes we still have, on both sides, bureaucracy, lack of real knowledge of each other, or we don't have enough experienced talents for business, and so on and so forth. All this also hinder the goodwill efforts from both sides. Fresh and more endeavors are called for to improve the environment of our cooperation and the people-to-people -people exchanges. More dialogues, more visits, and meetings are needed to strengthen our mutual understanding by overcoming old inertia and misconceptions. We need leadership from all sectors of the society to open the way wider for the relationship. We need the leaders like present today, all of you, to exercise your impact to the benefits of a better and a stronger cooperation. It is for all those that make today's, that makes today's event so valuable, so timely, and so appreciative. 2019 will mark the 40th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic ties between our two countries. Our common future is really very, very bright. And the opportunities remained in our hands, in your hands. We are ready and keen as ever to work closely with Irish friends and leaders, leading personalities across the board to elevate our ties and cooperation to a new high. It is high time to seize the moment. Gerh Mahagreth. <laughs>